Hello, friends and creators. <laughs> it's the lady laughs a lot, Barbara. When I was creating the recap video of StamperCon 2024, I was swept away in the conversation around foiling and foiling machines. So much so that it added 20 minutes of extra content just by itself. So I decided to make this extra standalone video. Foiling can add a beautiful, professional looking touch to home paper crafting projects, and in some cases, tablet cases or home decor projects as well. It's shimmery, it's shiny, but in my experience, I found out I was hardly using it if I was using it at all. The demo at StamperCon prompted me to blow the dust off my supplies and re-examine why. <laughs> so what we're demoing here today is the new Mink, it's the Mink Machine from Pink and Mange. American Crafts actually makes it and we um, private label it. Basically, the science behind this is that toner in a laser printer gets sticky when hot, which is why when I found out about this technique a few years ago, I got an inexpensive laser printer so I could print my own designs. When you use toner, toner gets sticky when it gets hot. So our foil actually is a foil that has no adhesive in it. Uh, so what you need is something to pull it off. So anytime you use our foil, anything sticky will take the foil off. This is a critical piece of information because there's different types of foil out on the market. There are some that have no adhesive attached to the foil. There are ones that have adhesive, a layer of adhesive on the foil, and those, need, those both need heat. But there's also one that has adhesive with the foil that doesn't need heat and only uses pressure. Let's talk about the anatomy of a foil sheet just for a quick second. This is a used foil sheet so that I could explain that that clear plastic that you see after you pull it off is called the backing sheet, right? So there's the clear plastic backing sheet, then there's a layer of foil, and then some foils have a thin layer of adhesive added next, and some don't. Can you describe, because there's two different types of foil, right? There's this foil that yes. you're talking about. There is two types of What's foil the other on the one? Mark. On the market, there's two types of foil. There's one that's called heat foil. Even though we use heat, it's not for the foil. It's for the um, it's for the the toner cards to get sticky. Oh, so God. Spellbinders is the biggest one that uses um, a, a foil like that. Okay. So they have adhesive right on a very thin layer of adhesive on the foil, so that when it gets hot, it works like a hot glue gun. That foil will come off. So you always need something sticky but there's a lot of foils on the market, Spellbinder is a big one of it, that has the sticky already on it, and that comes, then heat will make that foil sticky. What can make this conversation super confusing for me is how these foils are marketed, because each of the manufacturers are calling their foil by a proprietary name. But what I was trying to understand is what is the terminology for these three different types of foils. I was so excited to be in front of a human being at this demo and I'm sorry I didn't get her name because she was so knowledgeable and so patient. She did use the term heat foil, but what is the foil called that Pink Mane is using? And there's two different names to look for, right? Because isn't that one called like thermal something? Thermo or heat, heat foil or thermo. There's thermo web too, but thermo web makes a, they, something different. They make it. They make both kinds. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. You know, so that's right. a manufacturer's thermo web. So, and what is your? It's just called ours. It's called pink and mail. It's called pink and. I love pink and mail. Pink and mail. It's we call it cheer foil. Okay. See, so cheer foil is a proprietary name that pink and main is using. So if heat foil is foil with adhesive, what is the foil without adhesive called? <laughs> I did a little more online research after I came home and our friends at scrapbook.com had the answer. They listed three types of terminology, heat foil, reactive transfer foil, 
and adhesive foil. So this fabulous woman doing the demo for Pink in Maine is using a reactive transfer foil, which I've noticed they drop the reactive and just sometimes call it transfer foil. Okay, so transfer foil does not have adhesive on it, so it needs the thing that it's going to get stuck to to be sticky to pull the foil off the backing sheet. An example of this is toner cards. Pink and Main, along with other companies, sell toner cards like these with images already printed on them. A type of ink that comes out of a laser machine, we get them done professionally because we don't want any kind of problems with them. And it's done on a kind of paper that has a little bit of gloss on it. Okay, so let's let her continue her demo. And then I will demo some other types of foil so we can see how they can be best used with art journaling and memory keeping. I usually start my um, mink machine at a three. Okay. You don't want it to get too hot. We have a power switch here that turns on and off. Uh, it will automatically go off when it sits too long. So that's just so it doesn't catch on fire. So once I have that, we're going to let it cool a minute. And then when we do the reveal. That's the fun part. Is the fun part. Look at that. Yay! And that's not all. So now we have oh, all this foil left yes. on here. So we can take a toner card, oh, which nice. is all toner ink on here, and we're going to flip this over like this. Going to line it up again. That. Wow. And here is that. So that's using the same. So then I'm gonna let this uh like the old cool. Polaroids. Yeah, you gotta let it cool. <laughs> and this is just the backing sheet that you're seeing here. So when I pull this off, all the rest of that foil gets used. This is your backing sheet for the foil. So my version of this at home is setting up my laminator so I can show you why I love using my laser printer with foil. Of course you have to wait for the laminator to heat up. So I cut and prepped my pieces while I waited. I use standard kitchen parchment paper to put the project through the laminator. This is why we all get excited about foil. Look how gorgeous, how cool is this? So this is just a 28 pound laser printer paper run through the laser printer and the laminator is set on three mil. This gives me the opportunity to print out anything custom that I want. Yep, custom foil, baby. Gotta love it. So shiny. <laughs> Back at the demo, she described another way to use foil, which I will demo for you here at home. So if you have something sticky, let's say you have a stencil that you love, and you want to foil a stencil. If you have a transfer gel or any kind of gel, that dries tacky, you can put that down, let it completely dry, and then put your foil on it, but you gotta let it dry tacky, and once it's tacky, then the foil will come off on that. So anything sticky will pull our foil off. So I like to layer it on thick because it's easy to accidentally scrape too much off. Like you can see the black paper now, so then I go back and I'm trying to smooth that over. I want to make sure I have nice full coverage. A reveal is so satisfying, even if it's not the finished project. I decided to also use a white sheet of paper with this Habit Tracker stencil. You have to let that gel sit now for at least an hour until it dries clear and tacky. This is why I really don't use it for art journaling because art journaling for me is very spontaneous. And if at that point I want to use foil, I don't want to get the gel out and have to wait an hour to apply the foil where I want it. Now maybe with memory keeping, if I have something special, a little forethought about a title or something I want to add when I do my memory keeping, that's a different story. Anyway, I let these two cards sit overnight. The next day, they were clear and tacky. 
I used my die press to apply even pressure to the foil that I placed over the top. You can already tell it's worked because you can see the impression through the foil. Ooh, pretty. It's not 100% perfect, but I could live with that. All right, this next stencil was a little bit more intricate. So I wasn't really convinced that the die press did enough. It probably did, but just for the heck of it, I ran the brayer over it a few times, making sure to get into the corners. Oh my God, I love this. This is so gorgeous. Wait, why don't I do this more often? Okay, so so far you've seen the two ways I would use reactive transfer foil or transfer foil. Custom designs through my laser printer or using that gel transfer if I don't mind waiting over an hour to get the job done. Before I talk about the other foil, the heat foil, let's switch the conversation back to the foiling machine. So as you saw before, I'm using a laminator at home that has two settings, 3 mil and 5 mil plus. I experimented with these deco foil transfer sheets and their toner cards, which have been sitting for over a year unopened. Their directions even show how to use a laminator. The results were not as fab as the demo we just saw with pink and mane. Still gorgeous. I'm assuming my laminator didn't get hot enough, maybe? Because the second one was even worse. She did mention that their toner cards are done on a type of glossy paper, and these deco foil ones felt more like a chipboard. So this is probably a very good advertisement for the Mink machine because it has those variable temperature controls for foiling. I'm not sure why the deco foil didn't work as good, but we really can't rule out user error. I am not an expert in this topic for sure. Okay, so before I show you the easiest way, I like to use foil for art journaling because it's quick and simple. Let's move on to heat foil just for a little second here. Plugged into my power pack are freestyle heat pens made by Quill. They came with a metal mat and magnets to hold your project. The tips of these pens get hot enough to heat the adhesive and foil on the back of the clear backing sheet, but not hot enough to burn it or the stencil. With these pens, you can foil things that can't go through a foiling machine or a printer, like wooden plaques or gift boxes, for instance. That's what makes these really cool. That's why I bought them, but with that said, I never use them. It looks really nice on vellum, but I feel like you can still see each individual pen stroke that you've made. And just for you, I tried it on my tablet case. I also want to mention what I don't like about the freestyle pens is not being able to see what I'm foiling on. Like, I mean, here I was just willy-nilly picking a spot and started writing. But if I wanted to be more precise about where the foil gets applied, it gets challenging. I was kind of impressed though, for the most part. I mean, it didn't have complete coverage, but it is a fun alternative if you want to foil on things like gifts or home decor. <laughs> Look, you could really go down a rabbit hole. Yes, even further than the rabbit hole I started when it comes to foiling, because now they have these hot plates that remind me of what my family and I used to use back in Thanksgiving when I was a wee child. <laughs> These plates heat up and you put something similar to a die from for the die cutting machine on the hot plate. As a matter of fact, I think they, some of them work both jobs. <laughs> I don't know, but you, you heat up this die on this heat plate and then run it through pressure with the foil on it and it does foiling. I, I'm telling you, I'm sorry I don't have one of them to kind of show you and for as much as I use foil and as much as I'm an expert as you could tell, 
I'm not going to get one of those anytime soon. Never say never, but right now, for my art journaling and memory keeping, my printer and laminator is just fine. But this helps me segue into the most feasible, easiest... No, oh, wait, I can't even... Wait, there's more. <laughs> hey, and wait, remember there was a third foil. You had the heat foil, foil with adhesive, reactive transfer foil, foil without adhesive, but you need something sticky for it to pull the foil off. Well, then there was adhesive foil, right? Look, I have this Cricut set up that uh, it just uses pressure. No heat required. I haven't opened the boxes. I haven't used this yet. I love things sparkly, so I have a lot of hope and eagerness. It just never happened. This is the fastest, most funnest way to use foiling for someone who's doing art journaling. Or even in like your daily journaling keeper book. If you want to edit that out or not. As often as I use dies and my die cutting machine, it is more likely that I would use this technique. Using full sheet sticker paper to cut out shapes. This can be done either with the manual die cutter or with a Cricut or Silhouette machine. I'm using the metal mat that came with those quill pens to hold down the foil. Then applying the sticker to the foil this way it doesn't matter if it's heat foil or transfer foil or adhesive foil. The adhesive on the sticker is going to pull off the foil. Then use a brayer or run it through the die press to get good coverage. That's pretty cool. And especially because you know I love that distress look like we saw in the StamperCon main video, I really don't mind that with this sticker technique it leaves a little bit of rough edges or incomplete edges. Huh. So what did we learn? Heat foil has adhesive already on the foil, so you just need heat to apply the foil to the surface. Reactive transfer foil or transfer foil doesn't have any adhesive on the foil. So whatever you want it to stick to needs to be sticky. Whether that's toner which gets sticky when hot or the transfer gel or a sticker. <laughs> adhesive foil does not need heat it needs pressure. So I assume there's adhesive in that foil because it just needs pressure to be applied. We also learned that I'm probably not the target market for a mink machine. Or am I? I'm telling you, it's shiny, so it's tempting. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if that was as clear as muddy water or if maybe you found that helpful. Maybe tell me your favorite way of using foil if you're an art journaler or memory keeper. Okay guys, stay shiny and sparkly and laugh at life. Laugh a lot. See you soon.